from a very young age, I, I always had this desire to become a champion, to, to become somebody, you know, to go, to go big or go home kind of deal. And so I started playing hockey really young, and, and I love skating. I love being on the ice. And shortly after, I, I started figure skating to improve my hockey skills. And uh, my coach at the time noticed my talent in skating right away. And, and so I, I chose to, to uh, pursue figure skating more seriously. And I got to a point when I was 15, uh, 14 where I had to either move away from home to train in a bigger, in a bigger club with more ice time because um, in, my, in my small town, I just... I couldn't reach the level that I, I wanted to reach. It was, it was just too small. So I moved away from home, and uh, I was very committed to, my, to this sport. I, I skated every day of the week, all year round. I, I studied uh, competing provincially and eventually to the national level. And I don't want to be prideful or anything, but... My partner and I were succeeding at a point where we won junior nationals and, and set a Canadian record. It gets better. So this is what I had dreamt of my whole life, right? To be a champion and, and to be on the road to the Olympics. And my... As all this success was happening for me, my faith and my relationship with my parents just kind of, it was dying. You know, I was, I, I didn't have a reason to follow God because everything was going well for me. You know, I was at the top of my, my game. And um, you know, I was, I was living both, the best of both worlds. I was I was at every party. I fell into that party scene. I, you know, I had to get all the girls, you know. And at the same time, I was, I was getting, receiving letters from Canada wanting me to represent them internationally. So life, life was awesome, you know. And, but my mom, my mom could sense that my, my faith was struggling. And uh, we, we had disconnected. Uh, when I moved away from home. And, and so she registered me for a Catholic summer youth camp without asking me. <laughs> now, being 16, being forced by my mom to go to a retreat, I was not impressed. <laughs> so the first day of the retreat, I, I was not interested. I, I was not even participating, barely. And I was looking at all the girls, you know, just my mind was was not there. And, and on the third day, they invited us to, to have an honest confession. And, and so I went. I figured I had nothing to lose. And, um, and when I came out, this, this might sound a little bit cliche, but I could see clearly in a way that I couldn't before. I, it's like I, I had a, a new life in me. And, and I was willing to... to just to be more interested in the retreat, to be more involved. And so that same night, we had prayer ministry. And, and when I got out of, of prayer ministry, I, I was just filled with joy. And, and that night, I can, I can be honest with you, I experienced God for the first time in my life. And I knew he was real. I couldn't deny it. It was, it, was, it was too real. And so leaving that retreat, I was, I was on a high. And, and I, I made a commitment to pray five minutes, a week, five minutes a day and go to Mass every Sunday. Because that was a big, big step for me from, from where I was. So about a month, month after school started, I was struggling with this foot injury from skating and um, it was really slowing me down from my training. So my mom, she asked me to go get prayed over from her friend who had a healing ministry. So right away, of course, I was like, 
yes, you know, I'm going to go get my foot healed so that I can go back to my training and, and become a champion, you know. I was always striving for that one goal. And, and so I went to her place, to this lady, and, and she prayed over me, and, and guess what happened? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing happened. I, my foot wasn't even healed. And I was like, what, what the heck is this all about, you know? I was all confused. And, and I remember a few days later, I was, I was at my mom's and uh, at my parents, and I was talking with my mom about my future. And I was, I was confused about the whole thing with skating and, and with this new experience with God. And, um, and all of a sudden, as we spoke, things really came clear. And I just, I made a decision to quit skating out of the blue. And I realized, um, I realized that, sorry guys, I just, uh, I realized how much this skating had, had consumed my life. And, um, and that night I decided that I didn't want it anymore. And so, my desire to become a champion was gone that night. It was, it was gone. And within four days, I, I, uh, I quit everything, and I was back home with my parents for the first time in, in two years. And we were able to reconnect. And it was like my life started all over again. And... I, don't, I hope you guys don't misunderstand me. Um, I'm not saying that the sport itself was bad or that sports are bad, but it had become my idol, and, and it, was, it had become an addiction for me. That's all I wanted to do ever. And I didn't know how to get out of it, even if I wanted to. And so that's where God came in and, and healed me from that and um, freed me in a, in a sense, you know. And I realized that that experience that I had with God at that camp didn't even compare to the moment I had on the podium at Nationals. And it was very, it was very strong. I, I, really, I, was, I was convinced that they didn't compare. And so that's what really brought me through um, perseverance. So after moving back home with my parents, the thought of priesthood actually came to me a few times. And right away, it was like, no. You know, I flushed it down because, one, I liked girls way too much. <laughs> and two, well, I wanted to get married, so I liked girls. <laughs> and and it, 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 was never, it was never a question for me. You know, I didn't want to think about it. And so... I went to a retreat not long after and for a weekend. And God really confirmed my call to the priesthood that weekend. I, I had a strong sense that, that he, wanted to me, he wanted me to be a priest. And, and ever since, I, I've, I've been convinced. Um, and so I came home and I, I told my mom, you know, Mom, I... I'd be okay with, with being a priest. And right away, she was all excited, you know. And, <laughs> and she told me about the Companions of the Cross in Ottawa. And so right away, I, I checked them up on the internet. And, and I was like, man, these guys, they look legit, you know. <laughs> so I was like, I got to check these guys out. So I, vi I came to visit them for, for a week. And, and to be honest with you, I didn't want to leave. And I've been, I've been thinking recently about, about why I want to be a priest. And what I desire the most is to, to, to lay it all down, to lay my whole life down for God. As I, was, as I was so committed to this sport, and I'd given my whole life to it for the one goal, which was, you know, it, it led to worldly fame. Now I want to commit my life 
to God in, in a way that will lead me to, to a deep union with him. That's what I really want. So thanks for listening, guys. God bless.